Welcome to this episode of the Vegan Visibility Show. You're going to notice something a little bit different on this show and for a few episodes. Myself and my business associate and co-producer of the Vegan Visibility Summit 2022, Lynn Hawkins, are interviewing many of the speakers. We're bringing them to you for 15 minutes to share what their expertise is and what they'll be sharing during the summit. So stick around because you're in for a great treat. Welcome to the Vegan Visibility Podcast Show, where your host, Kathleen Gage, shines the spotlight on vegan and plant-based businesses and entrepreneurs from all walks of life committed to cruelty-free eating, healthy lifestyles, animal compassion, and the environment. Enjoy the show. Well, I have to say I am so excited for the second annual Vegan Visibility Summit, and I want to introduce very shortly my business associate and co-producer for this year, V. Lynn Hawkins. Before I do, I want to make sure that everybody signs up. It's veganvisibility.com forward slash summit 2022. That's veganvisibility.com forward slash summit the uh 2022 easy for me to say uh and if it's not written written down it may not be that easy but with that i am going to turn it over to v lynn to give a brief background on the summit and then we're going to invite heather to share her expertise well i want to say it's such an honor and a privilege to be a part of the second annual human visibility summit i'm v lynn hawkins i am your co-host and i am the vegan crowdfunding hacker. But today it is all about introducing you to one of our amazing experts. We're excited to welcome all of our experts. And today we're talking with Heather Landis. So Heather, hello and welcome. So I live in Copenhagen in Denmark, but I'm British from Yorkshire, but I've also lived for a good half a decade in Australia (laughs) and travelled around to New Zealand quite a lot. So I have a quite broad range of countries that I visit. So my background's in food safety. I've also been in a lot of restaurants in a lot of countries. I've been in eight countries doing that. They're like Turkey and Iceland and Finland and Sweden. Um, So that's where I get this sort of big picture view of food safety and also vegans and how they're treated in different countries and allergies, which is my big passion. You know, I I love what you just said there. Vegans is your your passion and your sweet spot in a lot of ways, because this is all about the Vegan Visibility Summit. And the people watching and listening to the summit will be those people who are either currently vegans, they run vegan businesses, or they're ready to step into that. And how long have you been in food safety? So I've been in biology since all my life. I've worked in hospitality all my working life, um, but I retrained in environmental health specifically more than a decade ago. And so I've been working in food safety, particularly in the private sector in restaurants and hotels for 10 years. And it's changed a lot in those 10 years. And I think the trouble around the world is that people have different ideas about what vegan is. And I think in the industry, as a food safety auditor, I'm not actually allowed to talk about what vegan is. I'm not allowed to educate the places I visit. I'm not allowed to mention food allergies or any of the other dietary preferences unless it's what I've been instructed to do, so by a contractor or by the the franchise I might be visiting. So I didn't like having my tongue restricted so much. I'm a bit outspoken about um, when people are mistreated or when something's a bit dodgy on a menu that either is a bit insulting or discriminatory or it's just confusing that people might accidentally eat something that could potentially kill them. So going around so many restaurants, it's quite shocking, the ignorance towards what vegan might be or what dairy-free might be. or And people get very confused with lactose-free and all of these different terms. So I guess that's what's brought me here is that I've just experienced some very confusing conversations with people. It's just a general lack of awareness in the general population. Right, right. And Dylan, did you have a a question for him? How how long have you been a vegan? Was this a journey over time or did you just 
were, were you born a vegan? And this food safety <laughs> stuff came in. I'm really curious about that. Well, I guess I'm a closet vegan for most of my life, not realizing that veganism even existed. Um, but I guess the first step was marrying a vegetarian and we had a full vegetarian wedding, which actually was vegan, but none of us bothered to mention it. Um, and it was very quickly after that point, that because life's easier when you might be a vegetarian, I could then become vegetarian very easily without all the family in the ear and friends trying to resist it and things like that. And then I had children and I guess that was the point where I realised what I was eating so much, especially with cows and dairy. Um, and it was very quickly, I reduced meat to zero and um, vegetarianism was very easy for me. And then I noticed that if I went eating out of the home, like I was at Danish school, um, if I tried to flex, it actually hurt my body mm. as well. So that it was sort of a physical thing as well as a very quick transition mentally to veganism. And I also have a very good friend who's vegan and she taught me how to shop. And when I was pregnant, she was in the supermarket help but and she started cooking for me and things like this all these desserts that I thought I'd miss if I was fully vegan and all these things I thought I couldn't do if I was fully vegan and all these difficult situations with weddings and things like attending other people's birthdays and things like that so I sort of was shown how it could be done and then I went vegan overnight about four years ago okay well, and I'm curious, with this summit, we're going to have a lot of nutritionists who will be tuning in, we will have restaurant owners, and people that their focus in the vegan world is the nutrition and the meals, and maybe they're a, a cookbook author. Um, what will you be sharing with them specifically that can benefit them as they grow their business to really uh, reach more of their market? Well, I've particularly worked with um, vegan hospitality consultants mm. and chefs who, who they understand about food allergies. But for example, a nutritionist, they might not realize that the people that they're giving a menu to or giving a recipe to are not keeping it vegan or not keeping it gluten free or whatever their uh, speciality is. So they have to actually spot the signs of ignorance at at the business they're working for. And that was a bit of a shocker for me that even though you're a nutritionist, you might not understand the food industry and how food is prepared and may contains and free from claims and all these complicated terms. So even the people designing the food don't understand that by the time it gets to the customer, it might not be the thing they designed to that. I found that very intriguing, um, already working with people who are nutritionists or vegan hospitality consultants. It's a perfect place for them to learn about food allergies and the dangers of vegan food when it's not properly communicated. That vegan doesn't necessarily mean allergy friendly. It means it's not harmed animals or mm. demanded animal products. And even explaining that to very advanced, even master chefs. So I've spoken to a few master chefs that think it's a fad and talk about plant based and they're not understanding the subtle differences. So if a vegan product is very clean and suitable for people with allergies, it's massively marketable because the competition aren't even thinking about it. They're not considering people. I, I love that because it, it's like you just hit on a sweet spot and, and a, mm -hmm. a real jewel of like, it's very marketable because most mm -hmm. people aren't even thinking of that. And I recently talked to a master chef who was trained at the uh, Cordon Bleu in San Francisco, and she is now a vegan chef. And I, I wonder if she even knows about this. So Vilin, mm -hmm. what, what other questions do you have? Well, we'd like for you to just share with our audience one thing that you know that they will be taking away with them from the information that you're going to be sharing at the summit. I think it's the opportunity because vegans generally are empathetic to people and very good at nurturing and considering people. And they just have to see the size of the audience that they might be currently unaware of because they're trying to serve vegans or they're trying to serve people somewhere along this pant based mixed up continuum, I call it. And um, when actually if they go for the milk free market or the you know, free from something market, even people who are avoiding meat for whatever reason, but this is a bigger market than the vegan market. This is 80% of the market compared to 4% of the market. So 
that's a, a bit of a gem in their marketing that they can just change subtle subtle cues and disclaimers, which seem to be popular amongst restaurants, for example. They can just make it a kind of more inviting, attract people with something that's sort of a legal requirement, but it's actually a really good way to drag customers in, attract new customers and please the socks off of them because they'll bring in their group of other people with these dietary preferences that are not necessarily vegans and they'll advertise for you how good you are, how caring you are, how great you are at customer service and all because you communicate to them really directly because you give them the information that they needed. Wonderful. I, I love that. and marketing. Yeah, that, mm -hmm. that is a great opportunity Excellent. for their marketing. Absolutely. So, uh, Vilin, any more questions? I I think that is it. I am so excited. I cannot wait to hear your presentation and mm -hmm. to actually take some things away and share with some restaurateurs that I know. And I, I think it's do just want a blindsided to... thing. Mm -hmm. What's that? I think they're just blindsided because they're so good at their their passion and their creativities there that this is something they can do without even changing anything. It's something they're already capable of. It's just communicating with a different audience. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And I do know you have a book. So why don't you tell us the uh, title of your book? Aha, <laughs> uh -huh. so very it, good. I don't know if it's very backwards good. or not. So it's inclusive, the new exclusive, and it's how the food service industry can stop leaving money on the table, particularly vegan food businesses would be my idea. Wonderful. And you've been taking the world uh, by storm anybody, with your book? So it's it's yes, wonderful. an international bestseller. That's so it's even a bestseller nice. in uh, Brazil and Japan, which I have no idea how that happened. <laughs> That's incredible. Well, obviously, there's a huge calling for what you're doing because a lot of people are dealing with illnesses as a direct result of allergies they have to food. So I encourage people to tune in to the summit and the uh, launch of the summit is absolutely free. All you need to do is go to veganvisibility.com forward slash summit 2020. That's veganvisibility.com forward slash summit 2022. And this is Kathleen Gage, the host of the Vegan Visibility Podcast Show. And V. Lynn is the host of Health Wisdom and Wealth Podcast Show. And we and are so excited that you are joining us and will be with us during the summit because after hearing this, we know that's where you want to be. Absolutely. And Heather, thank you so much and continued success to you. And thank you for being a part of the summit because the summit, our whole purpose is to raise awareness around compassion to animals, the environment, and obviously people's health. I'm wishing everybody a great day. Be healthy, think consciously, and live consciously. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You've been listening to the Vegan Visibility Podcast Show. Be sure to subscribe to get notified when the next episode is live. And we always appreciate reviews. Join us next time for more inspiration, education, and motivation to build your business one cruelty-free and healthy person at a time.